first year on Pond5, this video, I go deep into my journey, my experience of doing Pond5 consistently for an entire year. This is what I've gotten. These are the results. I shared all in this video. If you are a person that owns a camera, a photographer, a videographer, somebody that likes to sell or wants to sell stock footage and make some passive income doing what you love, definitely watch this video. So my name is producer Mike. I'm a commercial media producer. I shoot and create content and now I sell it on Pond5 and it's created a wonderful passive income stream for myself. So I'm gonna share all that stuff in this video. So keep watching. So take a small step back. First month of Pond5. I'm gonna have this video somewhere over here. Make sure you watch it if you haven't seen it yet because in this video I talk about everything that I'm still doing today. So all these tips, all the stuff I mentioned in this video, it's all relevant today. So if you just follow that video and watch the video and do the stuff I mentioned, you will make some money. However, in this video, today's focus, the one year upon five, I'm gonna talk about my experiences and things that I've learned to do and not to do how to save my time, I've learned what sells, what doesn't sell, and ultimately just how to make more money and make the most use of your time. So right off the bat, I made $4,683.32 over one year. I sold a total of 111 clips, that's roughly 42.19 cents per clip, and I uploaded a total of 4,640 clips over one year. So that's it, roughly a dollar per clip over a one year period. You wanted to hear the numbers, you got the numbers. Hit that thumbs up button for me saving your time. Editorial or commercial? Honestly, I don't think it matters. Almost all these clips were editorial, like 95% were editorial. Maybe like a few of them were commercial, but it doesn't, doesn't matter. Why Pond5? Because Pond5 is the best. Pond5, I love you. You guys treat me with respect. You treat me good. You let me choose my own pricing and you pay me 60% and you're super simple. You work with me. You pay me from Ireland. I love Pond5. You guys are great. If you're not with Pond5, get with Pond5. I'm not even affiliated with Pond5. I, I think so. I don't even work for Pond5, but I love Pond5. You guys are incredible. Pond5, become an exclusive person with Pond5. You guys are great. Thumbs up again and again and again. So for those of you wondering, what does a year of Pond5 even look like? I'll tell you right now, roughly 1,500 hours of everyday consistent planning, preparing, figuring out what we're gonna shoot. Then you gotta get to the shoot, carpool, take a bus, take a train, drive. We drove, spend gas, money, tolls. You get to the shoot, you shoot it. Sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you got some stuff there, sometimes you got nothing there. You never really know. You're always kind of doing the, the ambulance chase. Like you're trying to find out what the next best thing is. Then after you shoot it, you get back, you get home, you edit, you edit the footage for the client, then you edit the footage for yourself, most of the cases, then you edit the footage for Pond5, then you edit a reel to promote the Pond5 clips, and then you upload it on Pond5. And then once it's on Pond5, you already know you got a title, description, metadata, keywords, collection, make sure it's all good and relevant and searchable. Once that gets approved, then you promote your reel on like YouTube or all these different platforms, linking it back to the collection where people could buy your footage. So you got all these different components just to get these stock footage clips. A lot of work involved, a lot of stuff behind the scenes. It's not just shooting goofy silly videos and shooting grass and birds and trees. If you wanna make money doing this, you gotta take it seriously. You gotta get out there and shoot relevant content. So what's the easiest way to find out what's relevant? Easiest way is to go on the internet, turn on the TV, go through every news channel. Doesn't matter what the political affiliation is, you know, Democrat, Republican, doesn't matter. Everybody uses the same footage, but they spin it differently. Watch the footage, see what they have in common, and before you know it, you'll be seeing you know, closed streets, open businesses, you know, whatever's trending on the news, whatever's relevant, that's the stock footage you're gonna see. So go outside in your community and shoot whatever that is. Whatever, if you have a local news station, it's a whole separate topic, shoot, shoot whatever's relevant to that news company, sell them the stock footage separately, and then put the rest on Pond5, that's a whole separate episode. But you gotta find out what's relevant. That's how you make money. I'm sure there's people in companies that sell commercial stock footage on Pond5 and make money doing it. But for average people like me doing, you know, under 10K 
budget productions for a small business, like those clips are not really the best. These commercial clips that you see on Pun 5 come from like a 50, 100K budget production with a super like 10 point light setup and beautiful actors. That's the commercial quality stuff. I barely, barely, barely sold any commercial stuff. My bread and butter came from the editorial footage. And now everybody asks about, oh, you gotta get release forms and stuff. You don't need none of that. For editorial footage, you don't need any releases. It's out in public, it's, it's out there, it's, it's editorial. For commercial, yes, you gotta get releases, otherwise you can't upload it as commercial. It'll automatically default to editorial or it'll just reject it. So for commercial, you need releases. For editorial, you don't need any release. I tried mining a couple projects and what I noticed was my mined content was all 1080p and a lot of it was from when I started my, my career. So the stuff was just garbage, it was shaky, it was just blurry, unusable. Or what happened was you start rewatching all your old footage and then you end up spending all this time just watching it and rewatching it and kind of like reminiscing. What are you gonna do? Oh f And the drone is right there, it's in the tree, Fuck. I hit my head, yeah. I mean, I, I fell. just fell 50 feet out of the fucking tree. <laughs> So you get nothing done. I probably spent like 25 hours just to get like five stock, I mean five mine projects. And then these mine projects barely sold when at the same time I had all this coronavirus stuff selling like a lot more quicker. So I'm like, you know what, let's just focus on the corona. Maybe we'll do the mine stuff another time. But real quick, if you're a hobbyist and somehow you're sitting on old niche footage of an old archived event or just some archived historic moment, some kind of just real special thing, maybe it's worth mining, maybe it's worth spending a couple weekends going through and uploading it. You might be sitting on a gold mine, you might be sitting on a gold mine that'll cash out in a few years, 10 years, the Pond 5 still around. It still might be something. I'm not trying to downplay you, but it's a lot harder to make money with this if you're a hobbyist. You need to be a professional person. So how many clips does each project usually net me? What I mean is every time I do an upload to Pond5, I consider that a project because it's a separate shoot. And each project usually gets me like 50 to 150 clips, depending on how long I was there. So how do I edit my clips, do the metadata? Do I go one at a time individually? Do I do a bulk edit? What's the best way? I'll tell you this, when I started in April and May, that was when I went hardcore Pond 5. That's when we just lived and breathed Pond 5, where we individually edited every single clip. We specifically tailored every single description and title. It was just tedious and meticulous, and it was e-labor. That's exactly what it was, just the most tedious thing in the world. And the reason, I'll tell you this, the reason I stopped doing it individually is because we spent so much time and energy and effort on these individual clips when at the same time we had clips that we did just a, a kind of a, a lazy bulk batch edit. I'm not saying to half-ass it, but I'm saying it's the lazier way of doing it. Maybe it takes you like 15 minutes to do a, like 10, 15 minutes to do a batch edit compared to 10, 15 minutes per clip. So what happened was my batch edit clips were selling when my individual clips that I gave so much time and attention to, they were not even selling or moving or getting any views. So that's why I decided just to stop individual editing the clips and just batch editing smartly. You gotta research all the, all the keywords, research the, the descriptions, make sure what you're writing is accurate and relevant. Do a little bit of research, but the batch edits so far have gotten me the most return and saved me the most time. And really, the batch edits are Really the only reason I continue to do Pond5 until this day. Totally frank, if there were no batch edits, I would not be doing Pond5 because it's just too time consuming. So check this out. If you guys give this video 100 likes, I'll make a separate video, a full tutorial, screen sharing my tutorial of how I batch edit my clips, what my thought process is, how I think up the keywords, how I do my research, how I find all that stuff. I'll make you guys a beautiful tutorial how I do the batch edit, 100 likes. Let's see it happen. So just keep going up and up and up. Make another YouTube account if you have to, just mm, 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 mm. Right. Pricing. Everybody 
is asking about prices and how much do I charge? What's this worth? How much is this? How much is this? 10K, 5K, 1080, drone. I've tried a lot of different prices. And from what I found working consistently is for 1080p footage, I price it at $79, 1080p footage. If it's like a good clip, it's like, you know, if it's a good clip, like 15 seconds, something's happening, it's relevant, $79. If it's kind of a mediocre three second, five second, kind of a mediocre quick clip, I'll sell it for 50 bucks. Now, if it's a 1080p clip that is almost a minute, it's interesting, it's, you know, very well shot, it's a good clip, I'll sell it for up to $149. So my, my pricing structure for 1080p clips is $49 for mediocre clips, $79 for good clips, and $149 for really good clips. That's 1080p. For 4K footage, I started at $149. No matter what, I start at $149, then $199, and then $249 if it's like really, really good. But nearly all my 4K clips, just $149. And I have drone footage, which is also 4K, and I price my drone footage starting also at 149 if it's just really mediocre, just basic drone footage. But if it's like a really nice like cinematic shot, I'll do maybe like 199, 249, depending on what's happening. Because I, I thought about it, you know, a lot of the drone footage on Pond 5, it's mediocre. It looks like a surveillance camera in the sky. It doesn't look good. It's shot very poorly. It's overexposed. The FPS is wrong. So if you're somebody that can properly expose your shots, color grade it correctly, you shoot at the right frame rate, and your shots are framed well and look cinematic, there's no reason you can't sell your clips for the skill that you have. Also, keep in mind for drones, you need to have the drone license. Pond 5 isn't gonna ask you if you have it, but down the line, if you know the FAA come looking for it, you're gonna get slapped with $5,000 fines. So I got my drone license. I know the amount of work and time it took to get it. I know how much my drone is worth. I know it didn't take me a day to learn how to fly it. Well, I have a fucking 50 foot tree. I'm still here. Uh, Mom see that she's more traumatized than me. That's why I charge more for my drone clips. Because if you're good, you gotta charge more money, that's how it is. Sometimes I'll have a clip that is so hard to get, it's like a once in a lifetime thing that will ever happen. Freedom! And I know that like nobody else has that angle or no one's gonna get it. I'll price those clips like $349, $499. You know, like, hey, if it's like a super celebrity or something, like I haven't sold it yet, but I, I know my worth. I'm not gonna sell it cheap. So if you got something good, sell it good. So April 2020, this was our first month on Pond 5. It's when we went hardcore, all out, 300 hours, we went crazy. This month we made $468.45. All the footage is related to the coronavirus pandemic, closed businesses, empty streets, hospitals, graffiti, all related to coronavirus. That was the month of April. Let's go to May. May, we're still going hardcore, still coronavirus. This month we made 588.02, bunch of empty streets, shopping, financial crisis, Wall Street, all related to the pandemic stuff you see on the news. Okay, now we're in June 2020, made $464.27. First month we actually started to go down. What happened in June was we decided to take a break because the day and night hardcore Pond 5 was just too much effort, takes a toll on you, especially when you're seeing all this dramatic you know, stuff every day. Coronavirus, ambulances at one point. We even saw like these wargs and tents and it's not pretty. We've seen all this stuff you don't want to see. Decided to take a break, go on vacation, do a road trip, be a digital nomad, see how, what that lifestyle is like. Wasn't that good, didn't really work out. Vacation was great, digital nomad, not so much. But that time in June is when I decided to invest in a professional camera. Picked up the G9, I bought a gimbal, I bought a drone, Mavic 2 Pro, and I started exporting my footage in the highest bit rate to future-proof myself. That was my main reason behind buying all this stuff. While we were on vacation, I was learning how to operate the drone, how to fly. Got a lot of cool coverage of nature, forests, vacation, lakes, boating, all this good stuff. It was refreshing. From this entire vacation and all this stock footage, I got just one sale, and this is it. That's that. So now we go to July, and July is when I realized, hey, this drone, I'm getting pretty good at it. I should start selling more drone footage. 
and I had a lot of footage from our vacation, but it wasn't listed on Pond5. For the month of July, I did have coronavirus sales. That month I made 379.62 bunch of coronavirus closed businesses closed airports grocery stores all that sad stuff but while that stuff was selling i was out shooting drone like real estate outdoors golf courses i was shooting all this nice commercial stuff for almost the entire month of july and almost the entire month of august just drone Speaking of August, this month I made $335, and the first clip we sold was one of our goofy originals from our first ever production from back in, back in um, March 2020, my wife praying, but a bunch of coronavirus, streets, food, all this sad stuff, got a repeat seller here. Go to September, this month we made $491.24, bunch of coronavirus, pandemic, face masks, empty streets, homeless guy. Go to October, and this month, you know, it's an outdoor morgue, coronavirus, easy pass tolls. So, so sometimes you never know if, you, if you're gonna pass a toll or a sign, shoot it on your phone in 4K, could be a seller on Palm 5. So that was October. And now we got November. November we made 620.39. More repeat clips. This time we got a closed businesses, a fruit, food, financial crisis, coronavirus. See, I've sold this NYU clip several times. That's the morgues at Bellevue Hospital. So a lot of repeat sellers. And now December, end of 2020, we made, was actually, December was actually our lowest month. We made $152.35. All of it was editorial coronavirus footage. And finally, look at that. I sold one of those BMX biker clips from April. So I also only sold one. But as you can see, you know, oh, look at this. And then I sold one clip of my friend, Croatian Unicorn. It's just a one clip of her next to these closed businesses. I sold almost very few clips of her. And then January 2021 made 502.74. Again, we got the outdoor place, rallies, protests, moving company boxes. That's actually a, a, some footage I mined from before, some old footage of a moving company. But yeah, it's a, it's a Trump rally, empty streets. And then February, was 225 another small month but february i sold a commercial clip from a restaurant i mined this clip so i've sold a few mined clips and then we have a lot more repeat clips and protests and stock market so finally the one year mark march 2021 this was our biggest month we made 710 dollars and 32 cents all of it was from editorial sales you can see it's like closed businesses empty streets food bank charity and uh, the morgue that clip that morgue trucks have sold several times so as you can see nearly all of our clips have been editorial maybe like one percent of them have been commercial so when people go talk about commercial editorial it really makes no difference the point is to have clips that are relevant and at the end of the day a clip is a clip is a clip is a clip when you want to get stock footage, you buy the stock footage. When somebody's sitting there at that production office and they're looking to find that one clip that is going to make the entire project perfect, they need that one specific clip, they're going to use that slightly shaky clip or it has a slightly low bit rate. They don't care. They need to get that clip for that project because nobody else has that clip. So the point is get the clip, make sure you have the clip, put the clip on Pond5, sell the clip, just get the clip. Don't worry about the clip. You're gonna make money with the clip. Quick second, model collabs. I know a person was wondering how I do them. I have three ways that I handle model collabs. The first way is you just pay them cash. They sign a release. It's a done deal, peace of mind. You have nothing to worry about. They have nothing to worry about. They got paid, you got your footage. You can use it forever. Piece of cake, done deal. Just pay cash, way easier. Let's say you don't have cash, you're on a budget and you need to collab with someone. What you can do, what I did, was with one artist, I said, hey, listen, I'll give you 20% of the gross clip sale. So if the clip sells for 100 bucks, I'll give you a $20 commission, and you have to pay for the, you cover the PayPal fee, because PayPal takes a small fee. So they get their clip at 20% and a fee, and that's it. And then just to make sure that it's legit, if, if that clip sells, I'll include a report that shows how many sales that clip has. So it's, it's all airtight. And the second option is maybe you got a cool friend, maybe they'll do it for free. Maybe they need something in their portfolio. 
A lot of the times we did like a portfolio collaboration where they'll help me out and I'll shoot them a couple things or I'll do, give them a photo shoot or I'll give them like a free, like a favor or something. So you do like a, a value exchange. So the first option, do 20%, do a value exchange or just pay them money. That's how I do my collaborations. What kind of gear do I use? Nearly in all of these videos, I shot them with a Panasonic G7. It's a $500 camera on Amazon. It's like 200 bucks on eBay. I shot nearly all this stuff with a kit lens. And the best part is, what's funny is I shot it with incorrect shutter speeds. So it had like 60 FPS, but it was like 300,000 shutters. So it's like totally incorrect. And the icing on the cake is it has low bit rate. Stuff is like, everyone's complaining about the specs, but you know what? These have been my top sellers. People pay for the stuff, they buy it. And to tell you the truth, I thought nearly most of these clips I thought were garbage. I almost deleted them. But the one thing that stopped me from deleting them was thinking back to that original clip that I sold way back my first time, that three second clip. I thought, hey, if someone is gonna pay money for that, they'll pay money for whatever. So I stopped deleting clips. Unless it's like shaky and blurry and just garbage, like real garbage. But if it's like a usable clip, but it's like whatever, it's, it's worth selling. You never know who's gonna buy what. And if you're really wondering what I shoot with today, my main camera is a Panasonic G9. The main reason I went with this camera is because the body is stabilized, the lens. I have a 12 to 35 millimeter, it's an f2.8. The lens is also stabilized, so it eliminates the need for a gimbal. I can get away with shooting a lot of outdoor gorilla style stuff because the camera shots are super smooth. They look like a movie, it's perfect. Shoots 4K, 24, 10 bit shoots 4K 60 and shoots like 1080, 180 FPS. It's an incredible camera, does photo, it does video. The Panasonic Lumix G9 is like the camera I have. And before that, I was like a super loyal Panasonic G7 shooter. And I shot with the G7 for three years and I shot nearly all these videos with the G7. And just to give you a comparison, I used to have a Canon uh, 5, 5D Mark II. I dumped that and switched to the G7. That's a whole different story, but now I'm a loyal Lumix G9 shooter. So this is my camera. When it comes to audio, you don't really need it for Pond5. Very rarely you'll have a clip where it's like a super important like key figure or somebody recognizable and they'll say a phrase. Maybe you could sell it, sell, sell the audio, but I haven't sold clips like that yet. But just in case for audio, I use Sennheiser, uh, the EB, EWG4s, the microphones, the wireless ones really good audio. If I can't mic them up, I'll just use a Rode Micro. And for my drone, I have a Mavic 2 Pro. I almost bought the, the cheaper one, the Mavic 2, but I figured, hey, if I'm gonna sell stock and do this professionally, let's just invest and get something good. So I bought the Mavic 2 Pro because it shoots 10-bit, it's D-log, you can do incredible color correction, and when you put the filters on it, it looks like a movie. So these are all cinematic shots I've done with this drone. So this is my camera setup. At the end of the day, I'm gonna tell you this, don't fuss about gear, don't worry about specs, don't worry about cameras, because none of that stuff matters. All that matters is how relevant your stock footage is. Because you could be shooting, you know, something with your iPhone, which I've actually had iPhone clips sell because somebody needed that clip and there was no other version of it, just my iPhone version, so they bought that clip. So don't worry about your gear, work with whatever you have and just get good at whatever you have. I shot with that G7 for three years and I, that's what I did and that's how I made a living was with a Panasonic G7. So work with what you have, you'll make money. When the time comes, you'll buy better equipment, you'll upgrade, it'll all work out. So don't fuss about gear and specs, none of that stuff. One person even asked about bit rate and compression and like I said, nearly all of my footage has been just G7, low bit rate, just mediocre stuff, like web quality stuff, but it's being bought by uh, news networks on documentaries, Vice, all these big networks have bought my footage. I've even seen some of my clips on their channels, been on television, so that stuff doesn't matter. When somebody needs a clip, they need the clip, they need the clip. You cannot predict Pond 5. 
Like you can never know what's the next best trend. I know Pond5 on their front page, they have like whatever's trending this month and have all these different ideas, you know, like all kinds of like cool and goofy things. And I gotta tell you, this is what Pond5 thinks. They're just like you, they think this might sell. But the one thing that really sets it straight is they don't include the number of sales on these clips. So it's just, an, it's just a guess, it's a gamble to follow their advice and shoot these clips. And to back up what I'm saying is during you know, my hardcore month upon five, April, May, and parts of June, I had my clips featured on the front page in the Pond5 select galleries. I've had several of my clips featured in these galleries and many of these clips, they got a lot of views, but they got zero sales. So having trending content, having your stuff featured doesn't guarantee sales. What does get you sales is having stock footage that is relevant to today's world. So like I said, go on the news, find what's happening, create, create and shoot footage related to that. That's probably the fastest way you're gonna get paid money for selling stock footage. Another thing I wanna mention briefly is creating stock footage. Yes, people have straight up commercial stock footage, but if you look at the production value of it, it's super good. Like it's studio quality, they have beautiful models. This is a, a big paid high value production. And for most of you guys, including myself, we're working with small businesses, small places, you know, like under 10K value productions. You're not gonna get all this crazy stuff. So to go and try to do like a stock shoot, like, you know, in like your apartment, you know, maybe, 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 maybe you'll sell something, but for the realistically, you're not gonna sell nothing. And if you do, you'll sell one clip over the course of the entire year, like I did, I'll, find, I'll try to find a clip and then make $20. So to do a stock shoot, it's kind of like just for fun, just chilling. If you sell something, you sell something, but don't look at it as a way of making money. Just look at it as, hey, let's have fun. But if you are a professional production company and you do have a studio with models and all this stuff, and you do have access to all this high grade equipment, then yeah, go for it, might as well make some side money. Another reason that I don't follow Pond5 trends or try to come up with my own stock ideas and my own trends is because it's like when you try to think of your own solution. Like you meet all these, you ever seen these entrepreneurs, they think of a solution to a problem that doesn't exist. That's basically what you're doing. You're thinking up footage for a project that doesn't exist, if that makes sense. So what I like to do, the way I approach stock footage is I view it as a byproduct of a paid production. So now whenever I'm hired for a paid production or a paid job, whatever footage is left over or not totally bought out, I'll stick it up on Pond5. It's just part of my process. You do your regular pre-production, your shooting, your post, and during your post, you add Pond5, and now Pond5 is just part of your process. And the reason I do this is because this footage, this stock footage from this project came from a project that had a real market demand. Somebody actually paid me money to produce this footage, to create this video. There's like a real demand behind it. Shooting stock footage from thin air, there's no demand. You're just giving out a supply to no demand. So that's just simple stuff. And that's how I approach stock footage. Now, if you're a camera person, a photographer, you know, a video person, or a big production company, figuring out how to put Pond5 how to systemize that into your main process definitely will create a secondary source of income for you. So definitely check that out. That's gotta just make it work for yourself. So is Pond5 worth it? I don't know. It really depends on your situation. It depends on your goals. It depends on your career. It depends on how seriously you're trying to take it. And it also depends, most importantly, it depends on your expectations. What do you want to get from it? So just think about that for a second. But I'll tell you this, whether you make money upon five or you barely make any money, if you do this consistently, you will 100% learn to value your time. You'll learn how to work smart. You'll even get better at your craft. You'll get better at shooting. You'll get better at working with people. You'll get better at production at shooting and editing, you'll sharpen your craft. And the result of sharpening your craft is you'll become a better photo, video production person. You'll get better at what you do and you'll start making more money. And it all starts to build and compound. 
and over the course of this year, I, I can't tell you how much Pond5 has helped my business grow. It's just, it's taken us to, to great places and Pond5, I really look forward to continuing this. If you wanna be successful on Pond5, I really think it depends on your career. If you really wanna make money doing this, you definitely need to be involved in the video world. If you're involved in the production world, it definitely makes sense. If for a place that is pumping out content on a weekly, monthly basis that has new stuff to upload, if that's you, you can definitely make money with Pond5 starting today. If you got a daily, weekly, monthly supply of stuff to post, you can do this. If you are a hobbyist and you wanna make money, you know, selling videos of your hobby, you know, maybe you like shooting birds and grass, I'm not trying to downplay you, I'm saying it's gonna be a lot harder because the stuff you're shooting, it may not be in demand. Maybe, maybe one day, you know, somebody will need that very specific shot of that bird, but if you're a hobbyist, totally frank, your skill level won't be as high as someone who does this for a living for 20 years that has the same shot. So there is a chance you may sell it, but you're not gonna make money. You're not really gonna make that much money as a hobbyist. And if you're somebody that's trying to get rich and you wanna make some free passive internet money and you wanna just start making 500,000 bucks a month, Pond5 is the worst way to do it. In fact, just forget about this video. I suggest working at McDonald's. So you'd make way, way, way more money than Pond5. Just Pond5 is not for you. Don't do Pond5 if you're trying to get rich quick. But if you're a production person that's involved in this industry and you're looking to create yourself a solid passive income stream that'll come in each month, you can kinda count on it, which I have. If you saw this thumbnail, it's me sitting on this car. It's my, my Audi S4. I'll tell you, Pond5 has paid almost for that car. It's helped a lot with those payments. And without Pond5, I'd be trying to figure out you know what to do, I'd be out shooting some other random stuff, but Pond5 has essentially paid for this car. So Pond5, thank you. The money's real as long as you put in the work and you do it consistently. So that was my one year of Pond5. Hope you learned something. I will continue to be doing Pond5 because it's been steady, slowly going up, and I have put in so much clips. Like I know you've seen all this coronavirus stuff, but I've probably half of it is commercial and drone stuff. So I think as soon as this market changes and becomes a little bit more positive and the coronavirus comes to an end, hopefully these clips start selling. Hopefully the tourism picks up and the clips start going. So I believe in Pond5, I think it will pick up and markets always change. So it doesn't hurt to have this income stream here. And to make it work, I've been able to kind of implement it into my workflow where now it's like you do your pre-production, you do your shooting, your post-production, and then you do your Pond5. So you just make a routine out of it, put it into every, every single time you go out on a job, just include Pond5 in your routine and put the clips up and it becomes consistent. All right guys, so that's a wrap. One year of Pond5, that was my entire experience. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully it's gonna help you out and cut the curve and get you making some money because Pond5 money is the best kind of money. We all love Pond5 money. Thank you, Pond5. And thank you guys for watching this video. And if you learned something and if it helped you out, be sure to like it, thumbs it up, do that for me, big help. And subscribe, share this video on Facebook, let your friends know, let them get on Pond5, do a collaboration. And if you still are wondering about something and you need me to answer it, I'll do that for you. Just drop a comment and I'll make a separate video if it's a very good question for a good episode. And last reminder, if you want to see my bulk edit production workflow, how I batch edit all these clips, my thought process for the titling, the meta, all that stuff, like this video a hundred times. I'll make that video because I'm going hard with this YouTube now. This is where it's at. So I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.